Today is September 30th, 2016, and we are interviewing James Merrill in Taylorville, Illinois. James is 70 years old, having been born on August 8th of 1946. My name is Sue Burkholder, and I will be the interviewer. Um, may I call you Jim? Yep. Okay, Jim, would you please <coughs> state for the recording in what war and branch of service that you served? I was in Vietnam from uh, November of 70 to um, hmm, June of 72. Two? 71 or 72, I don't okay, know, a long time great. ago. And what branch of service? Air Force. Air Force, all right. Well, to start, would you please just tell us a little bit about yourself, where you were born, and maybe a little bit about your parents and siblings? I was born in, <coughs> I was born in Farmington, Maine. Um, there's not a whole lot I remember until about age 10. And uh, I, uh, I graduated from high school <coughs> as valedictorian small school only about uh, 13 kids in my high school class so it wasn't much to choose from um, I joined the Air Force I was well I was married at 18 and uh, divorced at 21 so I joined the Air Force in uh, July of, <coughs> of uh, 68 and I uh, I um, uh, uh, that's good enough <laughs> all right <coughs> um, did you have any siblings uh, two sisters one older one younger okay did either of them serve in the military no. at that time okay um, what about any other family members? I was the only one in my family that served in the military. Okay. <coughs> and um, what was your occupation before you entered the service? Didn't really have one. I was in, I was in college. Uh, from college, I went uh, <coughs> went uh, into the local business mm -hmm. in Solon, Maine, and. Uh, uh, small, small business. Okay. So, did you enlist or were you drafted? I was. I enlisted. You enlisted. All right. To avoid draft. Okay. And uh, why did you choose um, the Air Force? Because uh, when I took the AQEs, I used them. They uh, was the Airman's qualification exams before they had the AFSA. <coughs> AFSA, AFSA, I think it's called. Okay. And. Uh, uh, by kind of 95% of the sent out straight across the board. Mm. So you got to choose where you wanted to go pretty much? Yeah, sort of. Okay. Uh, what were the first days um, when, when you went to basic training? What were those first few days like? Uh, kind of scary. I was, uh, uh, I, I don't respond well to authority and uh, I uh, I uh, um, the first sergeant didn't act like he was real fond of me and how did that make life interesting for you uh, he <coughs> I still made uh, E5 in 33 months. Uh, I uh, still got what I needed. Uh, I didn't. We, I didn't depend much on the uh, first sergeant. Were there any interesting or memorable times back during your basic training that you can think of you'd like to share? Well, <coughs> the. Uh, the DI who was in charge of my squadron uh, was kind of, I don't know, strict with me. 
<coughs> and uh, uh, you took me aside later on and apologized for that. And how did that uh, make you feel then at that time? Oh, made me feel good. Did you receive any specialized training? Nothing beyond my <coughs> my uh, uh, my uh, specialty. And what was your specialty? Uh, clerk. Uh, well, at the time it was uh, uh, it was a Spanish language. Uh, uh, I don't know what to call it. it was, you know, it was 40 years ago, but uh, 40, 50 years ago, and uh, <coughs> I, uh, uh, because of a mix-up in basic, they were rather strange in basic, I, I didn't understand it at all, but uh, when we were filling out our uh, personal history form. Uh, we got to the part that said uh, financial history and we were told to put nothing. And so when I got to the school I was at, uh, Spanish Language Institute in California, uh, there was that obvious uh, untruth. And so I told him that uh, I uh, I was uh, told to put nothing there because I have no financial history, and they allowed us how they didn't think that was true, that was accurate. That um, <coughs> I uh, I should uh, tell them the truth. I didn't have anything to tell them. And uh, <coughs> said, well, we're going to look into that. And it just happened to it, two or three of my uh, cohorts there. And uh, I had them come in, and they explained what was going on. And uh, I was uh, put into the, <coughs> the uh, <coughs> excuse me, the, uh, Oh, the uh, clerk type of school, usually, yeah, actually, in uh, Mississippi, when I went there. So then, um, uh, where was your first uh, duty station, or the first place you were assigned? Biloxi, Mississippi, uh, Keesler Air Force Base. And uh, I was there for about 22 months. And uh, I had, in the meantime, I had been playing a lot of music. And uh, uh, the <coughs> the uh, Sergeant at Arms at the NCO Club liked what he saw. And so he made some comment about me, and you know, he's going to uh, Germany for his, his next assignment. I said, well, that's nice. And he said, well, he said, uh, if you've got any place you really want to go, he said, let me know, I'll, I'll, I'll line it up. And uh, I thought about it for a while, and I told him I want to go to Thompson and Air Base, Vietnam. And, uh, in a month, I had the uh, assignment. In another month, I was gone. So you went to Vietnam. Yep. And uh, <coughs> your duty there was. I was the uh, clerk typist for the for the uh, second air airport group uh, in the transportation division. I was there for about 18 months. <coughs> Okay, during that 18 months, um, you worked in an office setting then, and um, 
There were a lot of us there. <laughs> I'm sorry? There were a lot of us there. <laughs> How many were there? Oh, I don't know. Lots of Tonsu Air Base, which is in Saigon. Uh -huh. And uh, I have no idea. I mean, it's uh, whatever it took to run that base. Mm -hmm. I was in the, in the uh, <coughs> like I said, the second aerial port group, and we didn't uh, get together with other other uh, uh, people in the uh, uh, air base. Okay, so um, in your off time, your downtime, did you mm -hmm. what did you do for recreation or entertainment? Well. <coughs> uh, after about, oh, hmm, must have been after about a month, two months, maybe three months, I <coughs> moved in with a girl in, uh, in uh, Saigon, and I stayed with her for the whole 18 months that I was there. The, uh, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the captain who was in charge of my organization didn't care for it very much, but I told him when he, when he had the, air, the uh, base commander move on base, I'd move on base. I didn't have no trouble with that at all. Um, <coughs> okay, so uh, what about like recreation? Like, um, uh, did you have like intramural sports or? Any of those type of activities that you participated in? I didn't do a lot of sports. Okay. Uh, I did mostly, uh, well, I drank a lot, played a lot of music. Uh, I, uh, I had bars that I went in that, <coughs> that um, I was known, known for my music, so I would play, I would play in there. And what did you play? I played rhythm, rhythm guitar. <coughs> Excuse me. Rhythm guitar and uh, uh, and sang. And do you um, do you feel like that helped get you through? I don't know how difficult or how uh, you know it was there, but th was that just a uh, like a stress reliever for you? Or it's always been a stress reliever. Yeah. Always. Yeah. I uh, I. I bought a lot of stuff while I was there, and uh, one of the things I bought was the, uh, the stereo that I had, and uh, I didn't bring any, any, anything back with me. Uh, I gave it all to my, to my uh, partner there, and uh, <coughs> I... Uh, I, I'm, I'm not real clear on, on uh, how things went because I, uh, I, well, with it being so long ago and it being uh, what I was Being that it was so long ago, and uh, I drank a lot, a lot of it. it was, uh, I mean, a fifth of Jack Daniels was, was only a buck, buck and a quarter. A uh, fifth of Bacardi Light was only about 45. And <coughs> the, because we, were, we weren't charged any, any taxes or anything like that over there. And I uh, <coughs> put uh, a lot of that into uh, uh, into savings, savings bonds. I had about 1200 when I came back. And uh, <coughs> needless to say, my, <coughs> my uh, uh, wife, whom I married shortly thereafter, uh, didn't want me to have savings. She wanted me to spend everything right now in this room. And that's that's what I did. Um, 
let's see. Did you make um, any close friendships while you were in the service? Yeah. <clears throat> Me and Bill Cable drank a lot together. Uh, Bill was, uh, was a uh, in first class, I think. I don't even know what he did. I, correct. I didn't. I didn't make a lot of friends. <clears throat> I uh, I spent most of my time with uh, with uh, natives and, and uh, most of my <clears throat> time in the bars was I was busy drinking. Mm -hmm. I didn't uh, uh, I didn't uh, do anything to sober up. It was. Uh, When I got back, there was some, a little bit of uh, trouble about the drinking, but nothing serious. Mm -hmm. So, if I can ask, um, was the why did you start drinking? Was it something that you know was already something that you enjoyed doing, or was it to help deal with? No, I wasn't in combat over there. Mm -hmm. I wasn't. Uh, I had opportunity, but I usually. Uh, backed out. Uh, I didn't care to risk my life. I uh, didn't know the country anything. They didn't know me, so I wanted to keep it that way. Um, it seems like that there wasn't a lot to do. Uh, I used to go to the USO, but I always went to myself. Uh, the flamenco bands were good. Uh, that's about all we had over there in Thompson. And uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I don't even remember. <clears throat> I don't even remember uh, anyone uh, offering us anything different. Frankly, there was uh, <clears throat> uh, I don't remember a lot of intramural sports. I don't remember anything like that. Uh, I remember only the drinking. Uh, that's all I was interested in. And uh, when I uh, when I came back to the states, it, uh, it was very difficult to uh, uh, acclimate myself to the to a non-drinking. Uh, just being there, I re-enlisted. <coughs> I had. Uh, <clears throat> to, to, to do my last six months in Vietnam, I had to extend my enlistment, and I re-enlisted while I was uh, in the States. So, <clears throat> uh, I, uh, like I say, I don't, I don't remember a lot of extracurricular activities. Okay. Well, um, just some fun practical things. When you were out, um, you know, at the different places there um, uh, that served food, did you enjoy the food there? Oh, yeah. Um, see, I enjoyed mostly <coughs> what my girlfriend could, uh, could put together. Mm -hmm. She was an excellent cook. And... Uh, she had never made onion rings when I got over there. And when I saw what she did to, to shrimp, then uh, I thought, oh my, that didn't work good as onion rings. So uh, I, I had her get a big onion and uh, we sliced it up and made rings out of it. Mm -hmm. And she gave me onion rings of my, my uh, fried shrimp every, every day. That was just part of what we did. There was, uh, there was also some, uh, so I never ate much on the base because they didn't, they didn't offer much. Uh, the, my uh, most memorable times were things that uh, that I uh, 
did oh excuse me that I did uh, in uh, on the base they uh, <coughs> they were They were <coughs> uh, fun, but I don't remember much about them because I was drinking. <laughs> it's it's uh, so I had a I uh, I had a uh, condition that uh, required me to well I, I blacked out every time I drank, yeah. so. Not a lot I remember. So, when you um, when you were wrapping up your your um, service uh, in Vietnam. Did, were you discharged from Vietnam, or did you come back to the States? Well, I came back to the States. I okay. served on another four years <coughs> as a, uh, <coughs> excuse me, as uh, uh, a uh, uh, as a, I don't know how to call it, but uh, I call it a cost management analysis specialist. Uh, well, it's not exactly true. <coughs> I cross-trained into that when I got back and <coughs> went to school and the whole works. And uh, it was the first time I'd, I'd been to a school because I hadn't been to school since I, since I left uh, uh, Vietnam. The uh, <coughs> the uh, went to school down in Texas, if I remember correctly, and because uh, I'm, I'm a person who uh, tends to enjoy hot weather anyway. Uh, so one thing about Vietnam was it was sublime hot, and uh, <coughs> I spent uh, uh, six seven eight weeks thereabouts in uh, school and uh, <coughs> I uh, like I say I don't remember a lot, a lot about it because <laughs> uh, it uh, it was always the drinking that came first mm -hmm. and uh, I finished the school didn't uh, didn't get any demerits out of it. Uh, the, uh, the school was uh, I, I remember the school being difficult, but I don't remember it being impossible. I've always found school really, really fun. And uh, my uh, my time uh, during that school was Appropriately uh, appropriately uh, uh, it's appropriately used up, shall we say, uh, in uh, In, in uh, things that were uh, 
scholastic in nature, shall we say. I, I use my spare time to, <coughs> uh, to get out and to uh, mix with the natives. I, uh, I didn't do a whole lot with anyone uh, that had to do with the base. I don't know why that was, but I, uh, I didn't make friends on the base. I was like that most of my, most of my enlistment of the eight years that I did. When you were through with your schooling then, um, did you move on into, what was the job you moved into, what you were talking about? Uh, it was as a cost management analysis specialist. And because I was uh, an NCO, I, uh, I, I moved up really quick since I was already an NCO. And uh, <coughs> that, uh, that uh, <sighs> that <coughs> uh, enabled me to uh, to live off the base, which is what I wanted to do. And I already had a wife and, and, and three children from from before before I was in the service. So they <coughs> they took my uh, uh, the same man took my uh, family allotment and so much a month out of my pay. And uh, when I got to Vietnam. I mean, uh, to New York, which was my uh, next assignment. <coughs> I, uh, I, uh, I was looking forward to to that. I, for some reason. I don't know what it was. I was always looking for someone to share my life with. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I uh, was about yeah, it was about It was. It was. It wasn't too long before I was involved with with, with the young lady there. Uh, I didn't get married until uh, oh three four months. And, uh, after I was in New York, I and once I was married, I didn't stay married more than a year and a half. And uh, <coughs> I had two different specialties in New York. I was not only the cost management analysis specialist; well, I had three actually. I uh, once, uh, once I had my uh, <coughs> my job in <coughs> in uh, New York, I uh, had a little set to with the uh, uh, with 
squadron commander, and uh, we uh, we quietly agreed that I'd probably be better off outside. <clears throat> but then he gave me a choice. Uh, I had about half my enlistment in, and uh, he asked me if I'd like to continue it. I said, well, sure. And so he immediately <coughs> assigned me in, in uh, uh, the uh, avionics squadron that he was over. And uh, <coughs> I didn't uh, think much about it. I just went and did my job. And uh, in the course of it, <coughs> I uh, cross-trained into uh, uh, civil engineers especially, and uh, became a, a quality control specialist for, the, for that area. It seems the last gentleman had left on the base in kind of a hurry. <coughs> Someone had dropped a handle on the top of the uh, uh, area on his head, or tried to. And so he left, he left shortly thereafter and the space was empty. <coughs> and he thought it would be good to put me in there. And uh, that's what I was for the rest of my, uh, my enlistment. All right. So when you you're, um, you finished your service and then you got out, then um, how was it switching from military back to civilian life? Uh, it was interesting. I, I was still a musician. <coughs> and... Uh, I uh, went to work uh, well, while I was still in New York was when I started playing bass and uh, I got really good at it and uh, it, uh, there weren't any uh, bass players were hard to find and I, after firing the same bass player for five times, I uh, decided that I'd play bass. And so I, I had a bass that I had acquired from him uh, before, and uh, <coughs> I uh, started playing bass. I had a little stack of Tenny Wynette records. And that's how I learned to play bass. Mm -hmm. And uh, I. It was it was rather easy for what I was doing back then, and uh, I uh, I uh, uh, picked it up rather rather, rather quickly. <coughs> so uh, uh, when when I'd fired this bass player for the, for the fifth time, I started playing bass in my own band, and uh, we we uh, uh, played around, played on weekends, uh, <coughs> rather steady, and uh, I got uh, to where I was really quite good. Music was a big part of your life. Oh yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. I started. I started taking lessons when I was, when I was a boy, wee child. Well, um, uh, is there? Or, um, how have your military experiences? Do you feel like affected the rest of your life? Did they make a big change, or was it just kind of who you were, or, or how they affected your life? Well, so I got married the last time I was I was in uh, the military. I was still married when I I think I was. Oh, I remember. Yeah, I was I was divorced when I got out, 
and uh, well, no, I was separated when I got out, and uh, uh, my wife and I had kind of a tit for tat type of relationship, and uh, we uh, we didn't uh, really reconnect all that well. Uh, I had my son when I was uh, while I was in New York, but I, I gave him back to her because uh, it seemed like she'd clear, clean her life up. So, and uh, <coughs> I uh, when I went to Minnesota after the, after I uh, got out and uh, with my best friend. And it's the only time I've ever gone anyplace for uh, for a man. Uh, the uh, the experience was uh, eh, kind of on and off. Uh, I I I worked at his father's goat farm until. <coughs> until I uh, until I uh, well got loose sort of um, he wasn't around uh, I, I made the <coughs> Four Pines Goat and Goose Ranch, my base of operations, but I, I, I somehow managed to get a job as uh, a weekend warrior for, for, the, for a group, uh, which kind of kept me busy for a while. And uh, <clears throat> eventually I moved off there into a Excuse me. Um, into a uh, uh, job, well, into a hotel, and uh, the uh, the owner of the hotel had me. Working as a uh, well, uh, he had me working as a, a, a kind of a I don't know how to put it. Uh, he had some regular uh, tenants there that caused some problems and uh, had me working as as uh, as a uh, sort of cleanup guy and uh, <coughs> it was just a flop flop hotel just a couple blocks off the Off the uh, uh, off the main drag, <coughs> where it was just a bad bad part of town, and uh, <coughs> and uh, I, uh, I I rather enjoyed that. Uh, I didn't sober up for another. Eighty, so I was another four years, <coughs> uh, seventy-eight, sixty-eight to seventy-six. Uh, it's another four years after I got out of service, and I kept on drinking. And uh, <coughs> my boss uh, didn't care for me drinking as much as I did. Most most bosses didn't. In fact, I got in the Air Force rather than get a dishonorable discharge. They gave me an honorable uh, honorable under general conditions, and. Uh, 
let me leave with my mm-hmm. dignity anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, my uh, my music career was 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 a little uh, shortened, shall we say? I worked in. I worked with Bob uh, last name I can't remember uh, for years after that uh, both as a drunk and as a sober person and uh, it was it was interesting uh, the <coughs> the I never worked until after I got out of my college for uh, for very long uh, as anything other than a musician. Uh, I I knew how that would affect my. Social Security and the uh, the best that I could manage uh, was uh, working outside of the economy. Uh, my <coughs> Time was was spent. Uh, I had no income, basically, for years, and it's surprising that uh, the IRS didn't come after me then. And uh, I uh, I kept uh, the. to basic income and uh, went back to the, on the road I made three four hundred dollars a week and uh, he uh, <coughs> we we managed to uh, uh, live quite well on that well is there any um Is there anything that you might tell future generations um, that might see or hear your or interview um, just about the military in general or about, you know? Well, you know, the military has changed a lot. Uh, just the uh, AFSA and the uh, between the AFSA and the AQE. Each uh, <coughs> branch back in 68 had their own uh, entrance exams. Mm-hmm. Now they're all they're all one. Uh, it's been so long since I've been in the service that I have no idea what it's like now. Mm-hmm. Uh, my son, my stepson, Craig, went in the, went in the military. Uh, my son, Jason, went in the military. And I think that the best thing that, that, I, that I can tell a uh, person who's thinking about the military today is that it's, it's good for you. It may not make you anything in particular, but it's, it's good for you. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking time to talk with me today, and I thank you for your service to okay. our country.